Well, hello. I want to welcome you to a kind of an exciting video. I am reviewing a vintage pen that I love and its modern counterpart, the Aurora 88. If videos like this interest you, videos of fountain pens, vintage and new, and sometimes comparisons at all different price levels, subscribe below. Uh, if, if you have an interesting comparison of a modern and a vintage pen, I'd love to hear about it, so please comment below about that. All right, so what we're looking at here is the Aurora 88. Now, I loved the original Aurora 88. I've had it for almost a year. Oops, I almost destroyed it. I've had it for almost a year now. You know, it's uh, one of those slim black pens that I like. Very streamlined torpedo finish. This was actually Kind of an Italian response to the Parker 51. Uh, kind of a unique pen for its time. Very uh, uh, kind of a torpedo shape, very streamlined, hooded nib. Just looks like something out of science fiction. Now I'm not comparing this to the Parker 51, so we'll pet, set that pen aside. The Aurora 88 comes with a ebonite piston filling knob slip cap in several finishes, uh, an ebonite grip section, and then a celluloid body with a nice, a very fair ink window. Uh, the pen writes beautifully. It's very, uh, I own two of these. One of them is very flexible. The other one is not. So let's just take a look here to compare. So we have a semi-hooded nib here, uh, ink window. The modern one, little more fancy uh, the ink window you don't see any sections uh, the nib is not semi hooded although the one I own is flex and then it, it is also a piston filling pen so definitely a whoops definitely a little bit of a difference in the nibs now, as we continue on, this is what they call an aerodynamic finish. Um, in in Italy, when the, the, the original Aurora 88 was launched, it was called aerodynamic, and it was to compete with the Parker 51. Um, U.S. soldiers had the Parker 51. And this was actually the beginning of Aurora abandoning the Latin names that they had for earlier models of pens. Now, I have not found the meaning of the number 88 with this pen, so, you know, you, you can read lots of, theory, lots of ideas and hypotheses, but nobody really seems to know. Now, uh, Aurora was rebuilding its factory after the bombing in Turin, and uh, they asked Marcello Nizzoli, an industrial designer and architect, uh, to design a pen for them to compete with the Parker 51. Uh, he also designed various typewriters and calculators for Olivetti. Uh, there is a lot of design. It's not just function. It's looks. Uh, he also, I'll show you here, a sewing machine he designed for the Morella company. Now this, is, this original Aurora 88 was not just a uh, striking pen. This was pen with some really cool mechanical advantages. Now I can't show you this without taking the pen apart, but inside here was a nylon piston. Now that may not sound like much, but remember 1948. Uh, the piston itself had alternating leather and rubber discs, which uh, the new, you can't really see it, but the new one has a plastic piston. If I bring the piston down in this old one, There's nothing you can see, so uh, you know, <laughs> take that for what it's worth. Uh, the original came with 17 different nibs. The modern one has fewer choices, but still quite a wide variety because Aurora actually makes its own nibs. Uh, this flex nib was actually a very limited release. They did eight colors, and they did uh, 188 pens in each color. So I'm part of a small group of pens. The original had a ebonite piston filling knob and an ebonite grip. 
But here's something kind of different. Differential threads on the original piston. I'm going to put a link here to an animation of differential threads, but watch this. Do you see any separation there? Now I did bring down the piston. Watch me take it back up. Nothing changes up here. That's kind of cool. Now on the modern version, here's the piston fully extended. Quite a gap. I screw it in. And it behaves just like every other piston filling pen that you've run into. So that's kind of interesting. Now I don't have... Uh, handy the original packaging for the Aurora, original Aurora 88 but it was just a simple aluminum case uh, it actually came with a companion pencil but uh, yeah it was very modern looking uh, and by November 1952 it's Aurora had sold 1 million pens and that's more people live in the state where I live right now uh, now, there were various upgrades over the years, and I don't have pictures of those. There's the 88K, 88P, 888, the Duo Cart, which I have reviewed the modern incarnation of the Duo Cart. Um, this is a more student friendly version of the Aurora 88 with a steel nib. Um, and now, in 1962, the Aurora 98 offered what's called the Reserva Magica feature. That was a plastic piston, so they got rid of the alternating rubber and leather piston. And it had a small receptacle to hold a drop of ink to allow one to two more pages of writing when the piston was lowered. And actually, if you own a Parker pen, the Parker cartridges borrow this idea. Uh, the Aurora 88 was discontinued in the 1970s and then revived in 1989. With a look very similar to this, but uh, not orange. <laughs> uh, it was a resin barrel. There were five trim options. 14 karat gold nib. Uh, pistons had the magic... I'm, I'm using the English for this now. The magic reservoir. Although that brings its own cleaning issues. And fun fact, Aurora still to this day makes its own nibs. Um, so it was well positioned to do a flex nib in celebration of the... I guess the 70th anniversary of the release of the 88 with the eight colors, 188 of each. Uh, this modern version, I would say, will set them <coughs> more photogenically. The modern version is more similar to modern luxury pens than the original. Um, and we'll t take a look at some writing samples next. So my natural inclination is to ink this pen up with an exciting shading ink. And I will say, I was going to film this video last week, and I inked up the Aurora 88 with Platinum Classic Lavender Black. And oh my god, <laughs> what a horrible experience that was. It was skippy, it was hard starts, and I have not had that trouble with any other ink I've put in this pen, because I've had it for a while. So... I'm going to use Aurora Black. Now through the magic of special effects, the vintage Aurora 88 is, fill, is already filled. This one is empty, but I have one that's filled. So we'll start with the a vintage Aurora 88. I see that the ink looks almost black on the page. And then beside it, we will put the modern one. And it should be emphasized that normal Aurora 88s do not come with this flex nib. Uh, so the ink here is Aurora Black. Whoops. The vintage is, oops, sorry, I smeared some ink, which gives you a preview of things to come. This is Sailor Gentle, I can't remember the Japanese word for it, but it's Wisteria. 
So first thing I like to do when I do a review is I like to look at flex. Now never push a pen too far or they don't come back. So pretty good flex on the original, some feedback, but uh, that's one of those things Aurora is known for. So let's look at how the new one does flex. I would say that the older one, oops, you can't quite see it. The older one definitely has more line variation. It can do a much finer writing um, one of the things i've seen which i'm not good at that they do with these pens they try and show how it snaps back i will say i'm well i just said i'm not good at this so they both seem to snap back okay so whatever Let's take a look at wetness and flow. All right, so when I flex, definitely has it. I forgot to do the non-flexed version. Still has it. Now let's take a look at the modern one. By the way, always flex on your downstrokes, not on your upstrokes or your side strokes. So I'd say uh, maybe slightly drier on the no flex, but about the same on the fully flexed version. Um, that was actually supposed to be called the smear test and I just messed up, so. Sorry, misnamed my own test. <laughs> Now let's do wetness and flow. So no pressure, no trouble keeping up. Pressure, no trouble keeping up. Pretty awesome. Let's check out the, the, the vintage one. Wow, okay, just did the wrong test again. So no no flexing. Just fine. With flexing, no trouble keeping up. So pretty impressive. Let's check out reverse writing. A little scratchy, but not bad. And on the vintage pen, or I'm sorry, the modern pen, more scratchy but not bad and i would say those are comparable so is anybody winning so far i don't think so uh, all right so for writing samples i'm going to go with john adams who has turned out to be more interesting than uh, i might have originally guessed And we'll do another quote with the modern pen.
So I think you can see that uh, these are both definitely flex pens. I, I would say that the Vintage Aurora 88 has a slight edge. It can go, has more line variation. It can go finer um, than the modern one. But overall, both are very wet. Both are very comfortable to hold. The uh, modern Aurora 88 is definitely headed in the direction of looking like more of the modern luxury pens. You know, think the Mont Blanc 149 and so on. Uh, that said, I enjoy both. I know that sounds like fence straddling, but I like both of these pens a lot. And I would happily recommend them both. But if you have a limited pocketbook, um, get the vintage one. <laughs> it's cheaper, and it's a very good pen. Um, of course, vintage comes with its own issues, which you may run into. But, uh, you know, the semi-hooded nib, clever. When Parker went with the fully hooded nib, they said, hey, we don't want any flex. Aurora went with semi-hooded, and they have a lot of flex. So, uh... Yeah, very good pens, a lot of technical innovation in these pens, a lot of history. And uh, I'm happy to see Aurora taking a new interest in this line with the Flex Nibs. And I can't wait to see where they go. Because Aurora, as I think I mentioned, makes its own nibs. So I thank you for watching. Uh, if you're into videos like this, f please feel free to subscribe below. And if you want to compare any modern and vintage pens... Please feel, or if you have feelings about the Aurora 88, both modern or vintage, please feel free to comment below. So I thank you for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.